The world is full of Winti, all of which have different roles in keeping the balance of the earth and determining the future. As man came to be, each family is given one of these Winti to keep content through respect and offerings. If any family is to displease their deity, it is their job to reconcile so that the fate of the future isn't endangered. The Surinam region was loosely populated by various tribes of indigenous peoples, who called themselves the Surinam. But, a predominant culture and language began to spread across the region as the Lakono people migrated from the west. The Surinam people still remained, but were pushed to the cultural fringes of the land as they increasingly became the minority. The Surinam people primarily lived on a portion of the coastline of Suriname. The new immigrant Lakono people began warring with the indigenous sailors of the Caribbean, called the Caribs, which allowed these Caribs to inhabit a part of the coastline, adding a third predominant culture to the mix. There were rumors among the native people that strange men in strange boats arrived elsewhere in the Caribbean, and, just a few years later, these ships were seen off the coast of Suriname, although they did not land and simply sailed by. This would be a common occurrence for the next few years of these ships passing the coast, but never landing. Yet, stories continued to pour into the region of these Europeans and their technologies. Now, at the height of colonialism, and in the wake of many successful colonies, the English established a colony in Suriname for the purpose of cultivating tobacco. The colony in South America was named Suriname after the native people, who called themselves the Surinen. The English colony was established at the mouth of the Suriname River, but as the colony grew to about three times its original size, the price of tobacco sank. While other colonies had a large enough population to be able to cultivate more tobacco, English Suriname suffered under the economic pressure with their tiny population. The French soon attempted their own colony further downstream the Suriname River from the English colony. But, French colonists began fighting with the native people, and this fighting bled into the English colony, forcing both the French and English colonies to be abandoned, as they were not worth the cost to sustain. But now, as the English Civil War neared the end with a parliamentarian victory in sight, the governor of English Barbados, who was a royalist, funded his own colony, fleeing the potential persecution from the parliamentarians. There was very little fighting in the Caribbean for the Civil War. But, as a parliamentarian victory drew nearer, many royalists fled to the colonies. But, when the parliamentarians executed the king, outrage and riots spread through the Caribbean with the high concentration of royalists. Due to the violence sparked in the region, the parliamentarians sent a fleet to quell the unrest and to persecute those inciting riots to secure the parliamentarian hold on the colonies. With his wealth, the royalist governor of Barbados, Francis Willoughby, was able to take over the fort that the French had built for their former colony and founded several plantations in Suriname with many royalists following suit. Francis Willoughby called his colony Willoughbyland for obvious reasons, and the population of his colony grew as royalists guaranteed religious freedom during a time when Portuguese Jews were being killed for their faith in Brazil. The colony also expanded to have around 200 plantations, with indigenous and African slaves working to farm sugar. Willoughbyland was able to be sustained, as they kept relations with the native people peaceful, and sugar prices reached all-time highs on the market. The colony was independent from England, but was returned to the empire as the monarchy regained power on the mainland, and Francis Willoughby offered his territory to the king if he could be its governor. And the king agreed. But now, a war broke out with the French and Dutch fighting the English, where the Dutch invaded Suriname through French Guiana, conquering the colony. And, at the end of the war, the territory of Suriname was given to the Dutch, and renamed Dutch Suriname. The colonists in Suriname became increasingly dependent on slave labor as time went on, and Suriname was notorious for its horrid treatment of its slaves. It was often said that Suriname was the worst place on earth to be a slave. This led to many slaves fleeing their plantations and creating a society in the Amazon rainforest of Maroons, who often raided plantations to free slaves and for resources to sustain their villages. These Maroons were so successful that the Dutch signed a treaty with them, officially recognizing their sovereignty and offering them an annual tribute. There was a short period of time when Suriname was taken over by the British because Holland was conquered by Napoleon, but the lands were returned when Napoleon was defeated and Holland was liberated. Slavery was abolished in the colony, although this was many years after it was abolished in the Netherlands. 
Freed slaves were helped in a 10-year transition period, where they were still forced to work on plantations, but for pay. This was very difficult for the colony, as the basis for the colony was slaves working in plantations. This stress placed on the colony was relieved, as Suriname began importing indentured servants to fill the gap left by abolition. There was soon a gold rush in Suriname once gold was discovered, and there was a period of resource discovery and exploitation where an American company came to own several bauxite mines in the colony. And now, the colony shifted from a plantation-focused colony to a resource mining colony with a small population and area. Suriname had little to no involvement in World War I, especially because its ruler, the Netherlands, stayed neutral during the conflict. Yet, once the Second World War began and the Netherlands were conquered by the Germans, the colony remained in Allied hands and was a vital source of aluminium and other resources for the war effort. And once America joined the war, they occupied Suriname to assure its safety. And during the war, Suriname got its first hope for independence, as the exiled government of the Netherlands declared that they desired to provide its colonies with greater autonomy. Once the Second World War ended, Suriname was given a minister in the Dutch government to represent the colony for more equal governance, and as time went on, Suriname gained more autonomy. They were able to dictate internal affairs, while the Netherlands controlled their foreign affairs and defense. The people of Suriname enjoyed the protection of the Netherlands, but this sentiment wasn't shared by its ruling nation, as the colony was much too expensive to maintain. There were several internal political parties that were both in support of and against Suriname's sovereignty. But, as the question of independence reached the colony, a party in support of the action was in power. This began Suriname's independence, with the nation being given $3.5 billion to help them transition from a dependent colony. Still, since this action wasn't universally popular among the Suriname's people, this led to a period of drastic emigration to the Netherlands. Further claims of governmental corruption during Suriname's second election led to a second wave of emigration to the Netherlands. On the basis of these corruption accusations, the military staged a coup and took over the Surinamese government. This led to the Surinamese Liberation Army being formed from the societies of Maroons in the interior of the country. This army frequently raided mines in opposition to the government, which led to the military attacking Maroon villages and killing civilians. This began a civil war between the Maroons and the military-controlled government. The military imposed many laws restricting the public, such as imposing curfews and banning freedom of assembly. But, ideologically, the military had no centralized ideals, so the government flirted with the idea of becoming communist. This wasn't universally popular among the members of the military government, so the idea was scrapped. The change of heart was not received well by the Marxist groups in Suriname, who attempted a coup, which failed. The coup led to the December murders, where the military rounded up several prominent Surinamese citizens who were outspoken in their hatred for the government and had them all executed over the span of a few days. The international reaction to the Maroon civilians killed and to the December murders was severe, as development aid was cancelled on all fronts. This destroyed the economy and crippled the government, and forced the government to begin talks with political parties on improving the nation. All of these talks culminating in the creation of a national assembly. This began sweeping political changes, such as allowing the creation of a new constitution, and the first elections since before the coup. The elections resulted in the victory of the Front for Democracy and Development, a coalition of democratically supportive political parties. Suriname now saw a period of rebuilding the nation, and peace was reached with the Maroons. Repatriations were sent to these people, and the Maroon soldiers were made as their own police force. The decision was widely unpopular by members of the army and high-ranking police officials. So, under threat by both the military and police force, the president and many government officials were deposed, leaving the military in charge once again. Although, this time the international condemnation was immediate, with outrage in the Netherlands and the USA. Under this pressure, the military stepped down and held elections. Once this early election was called, the new president was able to stabilize the economy and talk his way back into international funding. The former leader of the military during the coups of the government tried his hand in presidential affairs. He was elected president and was fairly successful with a quite high approval rating. During his presidency, in Suriname there were trials occurring on grounds of human rights violations for the December murders. 
Due to the man being acting president, he was immune from arrest. But, eventually he was arrested and given a 20-year sentence. And that is the state of the nation of Suriname.